Hello, I would like to review a recent book published by Springer, The 21st Century Singularity and Global Futures. This is where many major transitions are currently underway in demography, energy use, environment, economic convergence, and global interdependence. With so much rapid change, often time scales for decisions are limited about five years in the future. It is somewhat paradoxical then that this current rapid change is guiding us to look at very long time scales. This motivation arises because one explanation of the current rapid change is that it is a continuation of a very long trend throughout big history. Only now when we observe the change trend within our lives do we fully appreciate the consequences and implication. This book was developed to help understand the basis for viewing the viewing along with the various deeper explanations as to why it is happening, as well as why we can understand it. But beyond just understanding, we attempt to articulate some of the potential issues and implications to help facilitate future scenario development and their considerations. So some of the topics that we have in the book uh, begin with a definition of what we mean by singularity, the placement within big history, the evidence and the data from big history which supports a singularity trend, other trends that go along uh, with that singularity trend, uh, various models uh, that could help understand it, various implications uh, of this, especially uh, current time, and then looking at some ontology and epistemology and really ask, do we really know uh, what's going on? What are the gaps and are we just fooling ourselves? So this was from a wide range of uh, uh, international collaboration. Uh, you can see that uh, about half of the author, chapter authors come from uh, Russia, uh, just a few from the US, uh, a few from uh, Europe, uh, some from Australia, and one from uh, India. So the definition that we'd like to have uh, for uh, the singularity in big history, it is a trend, innovation, population, or event rate that tends to follow a hyperbolic, that is one over uh, some time to the singularity, which goes towards the singularity at that time. Um, and uh, so it's most estimated to be somewhere in the new future decade or so, or so, or some people say it may already be have happened. Uh, so it's not just exponential growth, uh, but uh, this is singularity with a, a true time uh, where it uh, comes large. And that is the trend towards it. it. Most do not believe that this trend will continue to the actual singularity. It, it is a population trend, for example, has already been broken. Other limits will arise. Uh, and so this trend uh, will not continue to the actual singularity. Um, but then the question becomes, what happens uh, during this period and what happens after? How will this trend continue uh, in the future? So this is not just a technological singularity, uh, for example, popularized by Ray Kurzweil. That is, we look at uh, long-term trends and we want to look at some reasonable assumptions about uh, what happens um, in the trend and then during this time of inflation. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to place uh, these events uh, in big history. Uh, so with big history, usually start to look at, for example, on the bottom here, from the Big Bang, where a lot of things happened uh, very quickly after the Big Bang. In the, in the late 70s, there was a book, Steven Weinberg, the first three minutes, uh, where pretty much everything was kind of uh, determined, all the forces, particles within the first three minutes then things happened, expanded, uh, stars came uh, and went, creating heavy metals, uh, which then could form our sun, um, the earth, uh, and the galaxy, at which point uh, life could emerge on earth. Uh, and then the trend kind of continues to become faster and faster as we kind of approach uh, today. We also look at this as kind of two arms. Uh, so there's one arm, uh, kind of from the start, uh, and it decelerates. Um, so uh, a lot of things happening in the early universe, galaxies, stars, ecosystems form. Um, and then 
conversely, this is on the large scale, but the things that are actually happening are down below. And so the early universe, you really want to look at the very, very small, the Planck scale, and then the elementary particles. And as things start grouping together, becoming more and more complex entities, uh, the range over which uh, they occur or the kind of tools that they use become uh, much smaller. So we want to take a look at these rates and these trends within uh, this big history, which includes the history from the Big Bang uh, to the present. And so we look at some of the evidence and the data. Uh, one of them is uh, human population data. Um, and so this just goes back uh, some people would claim estimates of a million years back. Some will not go quite that far. To go further back, we take a look at event rate uh, in big history. There's been a number of people that have done this compared to the events that are in there. We also compare in this book, um, there might be some bias uh, in there as to selection of the different rates and where they occur. But there's also sedimentation rate, the number of species some would claim uh, in the GDP. So we take a look uh, at that evidence um, and some of the authors uh, looking at the various uh, uh, aspects uh, of that in terms of either the events or the numbers that increased uh, in a singularity trend. Then there's also other trends uh, in there. Uh, for example, it's just not complexity. Complexity requires other things like uh, ability to have information, collect information, make decisions on it in agency, need to extract energy uh, from the environment, uh, use it in creating some entropy, and then uh, put that into uh, the environment and control the environment of the complex system so that it does not uh, degrade. And finally, uh, maintain the organization, and not only maintain the organization, but grow the organization. So often that is when uh, couple of the uh, systems combined together, um, such as cells combining to multicellular groups or people combining uh, with tribes or cities or villages. Then we look at some of the structure underneath, what might be some of the causes, what might uh, contribute to the acceleration factor, then also indications of slowing down. So um, within this, we see uh, this complex system, there's a reorganization, information, energy and waste interactions uh, with the environment. Um, and then at the, the various trends we've taken a look at, for example, the population. Uh, there's also um, in the physics discoveries has shown indications of slowing down and also structure. And also, uh, there seems to be a correlation between the current population growth scale uh, and inequality. And uh, we note that that trend uh, has been recently changed. So we have uh, some of the uh, topics talked about uh, in these chapters. Uh, there's quite a bit uh, here to discuss. We also take a look at some of the models. Um, and so we have a simple model, uh, which expands into uh, niches. Uh, we have complex adaptive systems, kind of shown in the below. There's also one in scale relativity, co co coin rolling, nested transitions, and the cone, for example, in physics. Um, also kind of related uh, this structure into the large aspects of universe, life, humans, and civilizations. These last three kind of occur with a time scale decreasing by a factor of a thousand. Uh, so the universe uh, kind of creates uh, uh, conditions for the formation of the Earth. Uh, it takes about 10 billion years. Um, and then the Earth formed about 5 billion or 4.8. By four, let's say five billion humans uh, branch separated from the apes about five million. That's one thousand times less, and then civilization began um, about five thousand years ago. So we see an accelerating trend in these last three, kind of the slowing down in the first one, and then there's some substructure uh, in below. So uh, typically about six within each one, which means a, a, a factor of about three, because three to the sixth is about a factor of a thousand. So uh, we want to look at a simple, not a dimple math model, 
Uh, we have an exponential uh, being described by dy dt equals ky, right? About as simple as you can get. However, if the rate of growth k in this formula is also proportional to y, for example, you have you know, a return of accumulation of knowledge, the more you know, the more you can do uh, type of thing with new tools. And so you say that that constant is no longer constant, but proportional to that progress. Just substitute that in. You get dy dt equals cy times y or cy squared. Again, very simple. This time, it's uh, qualitatively very different. It just leads to a hyperbolic solution, which is just uh, that the progress is kind of proportional to some constant divided by uh, the time to the singularity. So we look at uh, some of those models uh, in here uh, in various chapters. Um, and then we ask about implications uh, of this. Um, and so what happens next? Uh, what is an integrated model of life, human and civilization evolution? And how does the cosmic part fit into it? Is there a potential slowing down? Yeah, we've seen it in population. We see it in rates. Uh, and how do uh, AI and global brain and cybernetics kind of fit in with that? What is the need for education and international collaboration at this scale? Remember, we're hitting the limits of the speed, uh, and we usually the limits, it's also spatial and time. Uh, the spatial is now uh, on the global scale, a need for much collaboration um, on technology, environment, diseases, um, so on, on a, on a global scale, kind of in a quick time period. Um, and we also have scenarios of longer term transitions uh, and scenarios uh, even longer than that, uh, kind of addressing the Fermi question of where are they? That is, if this happened on Earth, would it happen elsewhere uh, also? And then uh, we have a set of chapters on looking at ontology and epistemology, and that is, are there other uh, ways of looking at singularities? Is it just a perception? Are we misinterpreting what's going on? And so we kind of look at this critically. Um, and some people have very various opinions uh, on this and they state this here. So some just say, uh, we're looking at the singularity a little bit differently. Some say, you know, guys have missed out. Um, and some say, you know, it's, it could just be some uh, psychological thing that you just see things speeding up uh, around your particular time. So just in conclusion, uh, for this singularity in big history, we have many supporting trends. We have a simple general model, not very complex to begin with. We have a relationship to complex adaptive systems, which we know that this is adaptive system, an evolving and learning system. We have uh, see potential for nested growth, that is layers of punctuated growth, uh, that is uh, there's growth along a certain path, then there's a bifurcation where things have to reorganize, group together to continue to grow. Um, and the thing is we should soon know if the singularity uh, might occur because it, it's predicted to be nearby or some people would say it already has happened. Um, and this is the inflection. This is not the singularity itself. Again, no, no one really believes that a singularity uh, would occur. It's just the trend of the singularity. And then what would happen kind of near that point and after, how will it continue? And then we want to ask the questions, are we misinterpreting this? And uh, would this help happen uh, elsewhere? So we took a look uh, at uh, the topics uh, in this book. Um, hopefully uh, they're as fascinating to you as they are to us. Uh, and we look forward to uh, further uh, discussions about these various topics. Thank you very much.